I survived 100 days in Africa in Minecraft Hardcore. So as you probably guessed already, I'm one of the top scientists in the world. Not because I stay in a lab all day like the other nerds, but because I can actually go out onto the field and not die during experiments. My boss, Dr. Halsey, wanted me to go and check out something called the Sun God, or Big Belly Man that can control lightning and fire. Uh, either name, really. Before getting into that, YouTube tells me only 10% of you are subscribed, and I'm so close to 1 million subscribers. It helped me out a ton if you'd subscribe. And if you'd like another 100 days movie, eh, 20,000 likes and I'll do it. Lastly, I want to give credit to Beppo. I saw his 100 days Africa video and I really loved the idea of it, so I wanted to try it too. Also, the map is custom made by me, but not accurate to Africa, nor are all the animals in this mod pack. This is just for fun and not an accurate representation of Africa at all. I hope you enjoy the movie, however. Now, the first day, the boat chucked me off and sped off. I guess they're scared of this part of the land? Uh, anyways, I got straight to making some tools. This land has a lot of deadly animals and hunters here. I don't really want to be caught without any defense. After getting stone tools, I began to explore around. I want to find the sun god's village immediately so I can scout it out and plan an attack. Which, uh, <laughs> I found immediately somehow and then he showed me his lightning powers. And after witnessing that, I had to leave. I need to find a base spot now. Also, I'm very excited for this. Today's video is sponsored by G Fuel. For the past eight months, I've actually been drinking G Fuel, and it's helped me conquer worlds and do all of my insane challenges with ease. But guys, caffeine is terrible. I always crash after drinking caffeine. Well, you haven't tried out this bad boy. I've never crashed from G Fuel. It's kept me awake for hours, completely focused on my task, and I wouldn't be able to upload as often as I do right now without it. It's the only thing I take for energy. On top of that, it tastes absolutely amazing. It doesn't have a powdery or watery taste. I just put a scoop in a bottle, man, it tastes just like juice. My my favorite flavors so far are the strawberry shortcake and the sour blue chug rug. And on top of all of this, if you use my link in the pinned comment below, you'll be helping me out tremendously and there's a buy one get one free right now. Offer ends on November 30th. You won't want to miss this. So after exploring the land, getting some stuff and making a farm, I realized that I made my base right across from the sun god's village, which I actually didn't plan on doing. I, I was surprised it was there, but as you can tell from my hunger, I can't do anything until I get some food in me and this farm grows, so I just chopped some wood around my small camp and got some resources. Now, as you can see, uh, my farm isn't growing. Uh, you know, uh, there's tigers right next to me, and I'm still starving. I was planning on being safe and not going out, but that won't work. I need to find some food, but instead of food, I found a pyramid? Uh, doesn't look like it's one of the three Giza pyramids, and I don't think there's food this way, so I went back, said hi to a crab and an eagle, and finally began to cook some food. I'm luckily saved and ate up. Now that I don't need to worry about starving, I went mining. I still need some coal and iron. I also need a bed, because, uh, staying up for five days without sleeping, it really isn't enjoyable. Uh, some furs can be turned into wool, I just don't know which ones. So, I said hi to a tiger, some goat, it's a pig. You know, I, I also needed food. And then I saw it. A second sun god village. Um, yeah, this changes everything. I don't know if both villages are enemies or are teaming up, but this just doubled my work. Also, I found an oak tree, also known as the best tree. You a jaguar? Hello! Oh my gosh, you hurt! Oh my gosh! 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 Oh, my gosh. oh, oh no, no, run, 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 run! Oh my gosh, you hurt so much! So, yeah, uh, stay away from cats. Uh, I need armor desperately. I shouldn't explore too much anymore without it. Right before heading into the mines, I saw one of them. The hunters. Highly aggressive men, but they don't seem to know I'm here yet, luckily. Not sure what they're searching for, but that's not my problem for now. I went into the mines again at my base and went hunting for iron. And might I say, the caves in Africa are insane. Absolutely beautiful down here, they're just very deadly. Lots of enemies and lava everywhere. After a short while of mining, I gathered a fair amount of iron, smelted it all up, and first I wanted to make all iron tools and a sword. But uh, I probably should have done my armor first, given boots aren't the most important, but I don't want to step on rocks or a fire ant hill. Would kind of suck, so back to the mines I go. And I thought I would find iron all easy peasy like, you know, uh, with all these caves. But no, you know, there, there's just coal. Endless amounts of coal. 
which isn't bad. At least I'll never have to worry about fuel. And then I broke my last pick, which I got lucky. I was barely able to get four iron ores. And now we're in business. I should be able to survive a couple hits finally. I want to take advantage of this storm. It's nice and foggy. Should help me sneak by any hunters. I need to find some animals that can give me white fur for a wool. And remember earlier how I saw a pyramid and thought it wasn't part of Giza? Well, uh, it is. Um, I found the pyramids of Giza and something happened to them. There's holes everywhere, destroyed sections and hunters all around. I found this giant fossil next to the pyramids and got two stacks of bone blocks out of it. I want to wait it out a little bit, see if the hunters will go away so I can look around the pyramids. I found this tomb, uh, a, a well kind of thing, and went to check it out. It was incredibly suspicious down there and I only got cobwebs out of the place. After spending a little bit of time away, I went back to the pyramids. Uh, almost all hunters left and I don't know what they were trying to do, but the holes in destruction seemed random. Like they were trying to find some room of sorts. Uh, anyways, it, it was getting late and I was starving, so I camped out at the base of the destroyed sections of the pyramid. After eating and getting a lot more food, I explored the destruction some more. I want to find at least one hunter and kill him. Maybe they'll drop some plans for me, or I can find out what they're searching for, and also get some revenge on them for causing all of this destruction. But it looked like they all left. I searched low and high, went through one of the tunnels on the pyramids, and I couldn't find them anywhere. I was heading home when I saw one. I, I saw a hunter waiting for a boat and I jumped him. Quickly said hi to him right before he shot me and missed me. But all he dropped was two coins, some fur, and uncooked meat. The storm cleared up and I didn't feel safe anymore. I really needed to return home. And then I saw some sheep. I, I got excited and wanted to see if I could bring them home. But a sun god search party found me. Immediately wanting to fight, they surrounded me. I thought it was all over for me. They, they kept on shooting poison darts at me, not giving me any room to run away, but they were weak to iron. You know, after saying hi to their entire party, they dropped some masks, which give me special effects or powers. Uh, a confusing but nice find. I broke my pick, had a full inventory, and finally found my base. After that huge information dump yesterday, all I wanted to do was build this bridge across the river. I, I wanted to make an easier access to all land masses and chop down some trees for wood. You know, just a really nice relaxing day today. You know, we all need those. I finished up the bridge and lit it up today. It's not the prettiest, but it works well. And after looking at the scenery and animals for a bit, I got an idea. I want to know what happens if I wear their mask and walk into the sun god's village. Will they not attack me? Can I trade with them? Well, I, I was going to find out today. I brought a mask with me and I gotta say, I look so trustworthy and safe. I look exactly like one of them. Can't even tell a difference. Uh, I, I approached slowly and everything seemed safe. They were buying it. They didn't seem to worry or think about how I obtained one of these masks. And I found out they sell items. They're highly interested in gold, like the piglins in the nether. And the sun god sells his weapon? Or some sort of sun weapon that lasts for one hour and it's for seven gold blocks. It's honestly pretty cheap and I found out I can sell some watermelon slices to one of them for some gold. So I can basically get that sun weapon for free. After all of that, I headed back home and wanted to check out the other village. Same story, but they sell some new stuff here. I can get blow darts and a blow dart gun. The, the sun god over here sells the same thing, but I don't know where to get watermelon. Uh, I haven't seen any yet. But I did see a sleeping tiger at my base, so I got something going for for me. I crafted a net to try and catch it, would be a nice pet, but it woke up. I have to wait for it to sleep. Uh, in, in the meantime, I went out exploring. My main goal right now is to find some watermelon for trading. I did find a random lonely pumpkin, I uh, can use that later on, and then I found a third one. A third sun god village. I think Halsey lied to me and set me up for disaster. No idea what I did to her, but this is starting to look like a job way too big for one person. I returned home to get a mask. I wanted to check out the third sun god village, but this tiger also wanted to check me out. Uh, he wandered into my camp and made himself really comfortable. I think I need to make a wall soon, so this doesn't happen again. The tiger wandered into the mineshaft and I quickly blocked it up. I'll try and catch it later. Now I got the mask and headed over to the third sun god village. A lot is riding on. On this. I waddled my way into the village and took my time. I, I looked around a little, saw what they were selling, and then boom! You know, th there was watermelon. Eh? I got up to 31 slices of watermelon and our trading is safe. I made my way back home after that fun adventure and immediately got to making the farm. 
uh, would need to prepare a ton of this for some gold. And to finish off the day, I tended to my farm. Uh, I was getting low on food again. While at base, I remembered I would need to make some kibble for the tiger, but I need carrots to make it, which I don't have. So I set out again to find another food item. In the process, I did find this meteor crash site. It will definitely come in handy in the future, maybe. And I also got jumped by a search party again, but we just had a relaxing talk. You know, I, I said hi to them. You know, we, we caught up on life. It, it was a good chat. And then I searched the rest of the part of the land. Couldn't find carrots anywhere, sadly, but I did see this random ghost thing. It, it seemed confused, so I helped it return home. And I also returned home. Maybe there's some carrots on the other side of the land? I headed the opposite direction today and brought my coins with me, in case I find those hunters again. Maybe they can trade with me, but I, I found something I wasn't expecting. Another pyramid. However, this one is still intact. The hunters didn't blow it up. Maybe this is the one they were looking for? I mean, if it is, I don't see them anywhere, and all I hear inside are spiders. So I went inside, figuring I was here first, and I wanted to see if there was something important in here that they were looking for. But inside were just some venomous spiders. They wouldn't stop biting me, and I nearly died from it. Now I know how serious this place is. I did find some chests, but honestly, nothing good. I got a name tag and some ores. Uh, also this poem that someone wrote, but it didn't sound like it would lead me to anything. I got back to exploring, and this place only had tight corridors and cave-ins. You know, also zombies, which this little child kept biting my ankles and screaming at me to take him to Disneyland. So I took him to the afterlife instead. After that fun adventure, I made it upstairs and found some chest room. My ears were being blown up by spider noises, it sounded like they were closing in on me, and I needed to be fast. I looted it and I found a carrot. I, I doubt that the hunters were coming for this, but th this is incredible. You know, I, I, now I, I just need to get out. I made my way downstairs and ran to the entrance as fast as I could, but I was too late. The hunters were at the entrance. They were looking for this place and now I'm trapped. I don't have the fog to hide me anymore, man. They noticed me. They immediately got to shooting. Like, there, there was no talking with them. I tried to fight them at the entrance, but they overpowered me. A gun kind of beats a sword. I retreated back a little bit, and one of them followed me, nearly killing me, and I had to eat the golden apple from the chest upstairs. I rushed at him and said hi to him. One down, many to go. The next one made it inside and was looking around. I, I took this opportunity to sneak up to him and see if I could trade which I can, but he really wasn't in the mood to trade with me, I guess. Uh, upon making it outside, there was no trading allowed still. They just wanted to fight, which one of them tried to 360 no skill me, so I used Commando Pro and killed him. After that, I saw my chance to escape and booked it. I ran as fast as I could home and got organized. Having that huge fight for my life, I wanted to work on my base finally. It's been almost a month since I arrived here, and the hunters seem to know where I live now. So up first, I finally made that fence around my base, which didn't take much wood luckily, man, I feel so much safer in here. It's a very nice touch of security that helps you survive easily. Up next though, I want to build my house, but I need a lot of wood for that. I want to try and keep my buildings natural and fit well with a landscape. But from that little time spent chopping down the trees, I only got about 64 logs of acacia wood, which is most definitely not anywhere near enough for the size of base I want to build. So for the next three days, I just went around to the trees around my camp and chopped them all down. I didn't really want to have to cut down any more logs for my remaining time here. At the end, I I got about six stacks of logs, uh, not too shabby. Up next now, I need some cobblestone so I can make some stone bricks. However, there's a tiger in my mine shaft and I can't catch it until nighttime, which I waited for and snuck up to it. Nope, 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 not that, nope, mm -mm, nope, okay, back to the drawing board. And of course, the net didn't work, so I made a net on a stick, which also didn't work. And neither did kibble, so uh, I, I have a big orange problem now. And I think I need to make a tranquilizer gun for it. Which the gun is the easy part to make, it's really not difficult. It's the darts that are the problem. And uh, the only one I can make is the fermented spider eye one, which I need a brown mushroom for. I have the other two items, just need that little thing. Which I also have no idea where I can find some. M maybe in caves or under some trees if I'm lucky but I think I remember seeing a brown mushroom in that well thingy in the desert. It was in one of the chests, I think. So I slowly made my way over there, and would you look at that? You know, my memory wasn't wrong. And I wanted to be safe and farm up some more brown mushrooms, but that apparently didn't want to work. So I hope I only need this one brown mushroom. With everything prepared, I went to the tiger, took aim, and 720 no-scope YY ladder stalled him, and then caught the massive cat in my tiny net. It, it all makes sense, I, I know. I, uh, don't know how to tame it. You know, uh, kibble 
didn't work, uh, neither did punching it by accident, and I'm all out of tranquilizer darts. So now this cat lives in my net. I'll have to deal with it later. Uh, I need to learn more about how to tame, and I made the data book so I could figure it all out. I just have to go up to an animal and look at it with the book. It's pretty easy. Now I just need to find another tiger, which, bad news, doesn't look like I can tame it. It doesn't make sense. Almost like how I went to the shark and sat on it, and then it fell in love with me and let me named it. So I named it Sharknado, and then immediately found out that it's a dolphin, not a shark. I rode it home and then it left me. Good, I didn't want the Sharknado dolphin either, angry face. Before I give up on taming the tiger, however, I want to try out this big cat kibble on him. Maybe this will tame him somehow? Uh, I don't know, but I got to exploring. I need to find a cow, a chicken, and a pig, which they're incredibly hard to find. I did find more brown mushrooms, but that was all of my luck today. I searched around for a few miles, went into the night, and still couldn't find one of those animals. Until today, when I found two cows and a chicken, but were far from home like Spider-Man, and I need a lead to get them back. I have everything but the slime ball for them, and I know that snails drop slime here. I just need to find those. I returned back to my base, and I had a slime ball from a snail I said hi to earlier, but this only lets me make two leads, and I need to make another two so I can get the chicken home. So off on an adventure I went. I went to find some snails, but this will shock you. They're incredibly hard to see in this tall grass. And I was starting to think that there weren't any snails left, until I saw a group of them right under this tree. I said hi to them all and paid some coins for slimes. I, I didn't get it any other way, and then went back home and made four more leads. But those finally made, I went across the bridge and back to the spot where I found the animals and began the super long journey home. Oh, uh, I also found this really cool parrot and brought him home too. I want to collect some awesome animals while I'm here. Uh, once making it home, I just put them all on a fence away from the border fence. Uh, I don't really want any hunters or animals killing them. I went back out to find some pigs and I searched a couple hundred miles. I swear, you know, if there are pigs here, they're incredibly great hiders, which also makes sense since, you know, there's a lot of double tall grass here. And I was going to search the other side of my base when returning home through the river when I barely saw this pig. I freaked out and rushed to it, slapped a lead on it, and began to bring it home. I also found another cow and brought them both home. It's looking good now, I just need one more pig, which hopefully doesn't take long. There's one spot I've never really explored, and it's the huge mountain behind my camp. I made my way over there because no harm in checking, then at the top I met one of the guardians of the galaxy. Yo, what's up Rocket? Have you seen any pigs? Any, any pigs? I'll, I'll, I just, even just one. That's all I need. I just need one pig. Oh! <gasps> Oh my gosh, Rocket, thank you! I was there randomly just one pig up here. And, um, yeah, I found another pig randomly. There was actually three back there at the base of the mountain, so in case something happens to my pigs back at base, I'm completely good. And finally, the journey that started because I wanted to tame a tiger is complete. But now that I have all of those animals, I need to make a place for them to stay and be safe, which I also need cobblestone for because I want to make some stone bricks to make everything look pretty. You know, I got to make sure that we flex with our base out here. And nothing much really happened in the mines. I just got some diamonds, lots of iron and coal, loads of cobblestone. I found this weird rock monster that can throw stones at me, but it never did because I outsmarted it by going two blocks above it. Oh, and I kept on finding caves and enemies. Ooh, no, 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 no. After saying hi to the locals down here, my picks all finally broke, but I'm not done with this cave. There's still a lot of goodies in it, and I need more cobblestone. So I made four more picks, one back into the mine, and got back to work. I wasn't going for a certain amount of resources, I just wanted to make sure that I wouldn't have to come back down here, hopefully. Um, also, I, I wanted some more andesite for building, and diamonds. I'm still in iron armor and tools, uh, that, that has to change soon. And at the end, with all of my picks broken, I now have a total of 27 diamonds and lots of resources. Returning to the outside hurt me the same as it does in real life. It's too bright out here. But more importantly, my animals got free? Uh, I, I don't know how their leads broke, but I had to quickly gather them all up. I took this as a sign to make their houses already, so I got to planning. I want to try out new techniques, and I want to build above the water, you know, making a fun floating kind of island for them. But I want grass up there, so I terraformed a little bit and gathered up some dirt. Uh, next, I made some stone bricks. You know, I, I got prepared and began to make the staircase going up to their future home. I went for two entrances up here. I, I thought it'd be fancy, you know? I always only make one. Then I made a weird circle outline with stone bricks. 
rocks. I didn't want it to be a square. Uh, I wanted it to be a little fancy. Then I put an andesite outline with a uh, acacia wood inner outline and then dirt in the center. It felt like it fit the landscape colors pretty well. And it doesn't look too out of place here. Then I had to make those dirt trails from grass leading up here so the grass could grow, which God, it's so slow. Then I made pillars leading into the water so the platform isn't floating. You know, it, it makes it look a lot better. And here's the basic foundation of the animal houses. Luckily, I'm doing the chicken first. Wait, uh, uh they, they don't get a nice house uh, because chickens don't deserve it. They know what they did. So I did my normal double chest with a hopper on top of the glass prison and then lied to the chicken telling it that it was a portal to a chicken heaven. The thing believed me and now I have a perfect chicken farm. Now for the good animals. The, the right side will be for the pigs, middles for the birds, and then the left side is for the cows. Beginning with the pigs housing, I stayed with the same color block palette as the foundation. I made a big rectangle and wanted to keep it looking pretty natural if that makes sense. Um, you know, fences for windows, open air so they can breathe well, leaves everywhere, tall ceiling, you know, th this, this place wouldn't be claustrophobic at all. It didn't take too long, luckily, especially since I didn't really have a plan for this. I was just going off at the top of my head for it. Next was the cow housing unit, and it was the same exact design and build as the pigs, except I changed around the leaves placement very slightly, you know, I, I just didn't want it to look too much like a clone. And I'm very happy with how both of these turned out. Uh, lastly was the the bird building. Uh, th this one was a new design and I was very iffy with it. You know, I didn't expect to have such little room to build it at the end and I wanted it to be a lot bigger and wider so they could fly around, but I didn't want to spend too much longer building this place. So I just went with it and created this small box with a tiny tree inside for them. It's not the worst, but not the best, but all the animals are moved inside now and they're all safe, which is the most important thing to me. I spent the first half of today just looking over my buildings and saw that one of the cows got out. Uh, so I had to add some fences to the doors. Then I went around and added a slab railing to the edge of the foundation and then lit it up. Now I believe the animal area is completely done. Now I want to get out though. I, I've been at the camp for like two weeks now, building nonstop. I want an adventure. So I went back to that pyramid that the hunters ambushed me at and began to look around in sections that I haven't explored yet. Especially since I still hear those spiders everywhere. Like there, there's obviously some rooms left. I found a place where some spiders were, but couldn't find the rest. So I began to dig around. Then I found some obsidian, so I began to dig around it and then found this strange staircase. Upon reaching the bottom, there was an unlit nether portal. Maybe this is what the hunters were looking for? I didn't have a flint and steel on me, and I was out of torches, so I made an easy tunnel to the surface so I can come right back without having to explore. I made it home, got some gravel, and immediately turned it into flint. Now that we can enter the nether, I returned back to the pyramid, went through the easy entrance, and down the stairs. I lit up the portal and went through. Right there, to my right, was another fortress. I don't know if the hunters knew that the portal was here and they need that fortress for something. I don't know, maybe they're trying to kill the inner dragon. I I'm not sure, but I really didn't care to be here. I just got some quartz and glowstone and then went right back to the portal and began to head home. I'm not kitted out for the nether, but I am kitted out to catch me some more animals. <laughs> That's right, baby. Uh, I got me a tortoise. I, I have one at home and I want one over here too. I think he'll fit in with the pigs very well. I also want a pet beaver, strictly for the fact because it's a beaver. Uh, who wouldn't want one? And I think this is just a hermit crab. Uh, I, I think it's too tiny to be a coconut crab, but I put it with the cows because I think it'd be funny if it tried to pinch their udders. Later on, I found these two hunters and I wanted to see if I could put a lead on them. But then they got into a tussle and I started to cheer them on. I wanted to see who would be the victor. Also, uh, yes, uh, you, you, can, you can put a lead on hunters. Uh, after that fun interaction, I found these two koalas, but the sun god killed one of them. Uh, don't worry, I will get my revenge for it. I brought one of the two home, then I found three more koalas and this cool black bird and brought them all into their new home, which was a pain because koalas are annoying. And then... I was reminded of my mission and why I'm here. Another search party came to my place, and I thought I was handling it well, until I got down to the leader of the search party. I, I was reminded that I'm not strong yet and I can easily die still. He's also incredibly fast and I couldn't heal at all. Luckily, I said hi to him and it's time to get back to work. I wouldn't mind getting more animals, but I need to handle the important things first. I have enough diamonds to make full armor luckily, but I want to at least make a diamond sword. But I need those last three diamonds to mine up some obsidian to 
make an enchanting table. So back to mining, I sadly go. I only need a few more diamonds, luckily, and then we're done with mining. Oh, and I'm going to make iron golems instead of using the tiger for the sun god fights. It's just easier and faster. And on day haha -ha, funny number 69 to 71, I was just mining. Uh, there really wasn't anything special to show here. I just spaced out, mined away, got a lot of resources, and got 11 diamonds from this. Now, I don't ever need to mine again. I hope. Pretty please. Upon getting home, I got organized and cooked everything. I made all my diamond stuff and then went to that meteor crash site. It was the quickest way I know how to get obsidian right now, which took like a minute of mining, and now I have the enchanting table. I, uh... Just need a lot of books, which luckily this entire time I was farming sugarcane and various amounts of leather, which all of these fancy special leather thingies can turn into normal leather somehow. Uh, so by the luck of me, I created 16 bookshelves immediately. I was worried that I would have to go out and farm some more leather. The enchanting area is done now, man. I got all my armor enchanted with stuff but not my tools. I need to get over level 30 so I can enchant everything else, but I also want more leather so I can make some books to enchant with. So I went out hunting down some animals for leather again, but the experience was too slow. I, I wouldn't get the amount I needed in time. And then the idea came to me. Well, my base. The spearmen give a decent amount of experience per kill, and there's a sun god village right next to me. And I think that's where all these hunt parties come from. So I turned my one pumpkin into seeds, planted it, made all of my iron into iron blocks, which I can make six iron golems with, and prepared for war. It's experience hunting time. Well, uh, almost, you know, I, I spent the entire day just farming because I had to wait for a second pumpkin, but I did manage to make like 100 pieces of bread. So at least I'll never be hungry again for my remaining amount of time here. And then at the end of the day, the second pumpkin grew. Now I'm ready for war. I want to enter their base without being a threat uh, at first, so I can plant down some some iron golems, which I did. I went straight to the sun god, built two iron golems, took off the mask and put on my helmet, and it was on. He immediately smacked me around, but the diamonds protected me. I immediately found out that melee won't work on Barako. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, uh, he, he just hits me away with his huge belly every single time. I think he's been eating too many cookies with the cookie god. Also, my iron golems don't help at all. I'd have to rely on myself entirely for this. I farmed some experience while here, and then by pure luck, I found out that the the sun god's lightning bolt doesn't work on water. It just gets rid of it. I was just trying to keep the spearman away while I healed, but this is incredible. Uh, except for the part where uh, I can't get close to the sun god to damage him. So I had to retreat. Only range will work on him. Also, I collected a ton of masks. So I made the bow. It'd be cheap. You know, I didn't want to do range. Melee is more fun, but it must be done this way. However, I need more than six arrows to kill all three sun gods. Uh, I wish I didn't need more, but but I do. So I spent the day getting flint and crafting up arrows, all the way to 54. And to be safe, I needed a last resort, a lava bucket. The weakness to everything that's alive that isn't immune to lava, obviously. But before the fight, I need some more experience to enchant the bow. You know, I give it some more oomph. And I went to the Sun God Village again just to borrow some experience. Uh, they were generous and gave me enough for level 30. I went back home after that and enchanted a Barret 50 cal. I, I, I mean, uh, I, I got power four and unbreaking three on my bow. A true Navy SEAL sniper weapon. And speaking of seals, I decided to relax before the fight, y you know, just fish, you know, think about life, laugh at the chickens while I fish. But, you know, enough stalling. I waited long enough. Uh, my time is almost up here, and I headed to the village, ready for the hardest fight of my life. I will kill a sun god today. I took aim and began shooting him. I, I could hear the sky open up and lightning coming down on me. This would be, uh, oh, um, uh, wait, <laughs> wait, th this is, uh, <laughs> Uh, stutters. Uh, well, uh, the, um, the, the entire fight took 15 seconds. Huh. Uh, I guess my bow is a lot stronger than I thought. I went over to his throne and picked up his mask, uh, the soul visage. When wearing it, I can summon spearmen to help me out in battle. Wait, what? this sounds incredible and a game changer. I tried it out and summoned one of them. And yeah, he follows me around. Seems like a good teammate and gets launched into the air by the iron golem and die. He died. You're, you're telling me this entire time you didn't do anything. You didn't help me at all. You, you, you were completely useless. And then the first thing you do is kill my teammate. So I return home without an iron golem somehow and put everything away. I'm not worried about killing the sun gods anymore and I want to finish my base. Which first began with removing my farms and getting the area ready for the new farms. But first I made this tiny bridge. I, I was tired of doing hardcore parkour and it looked pretty cute with the tiny river in my base. After everything was cleaned up I began the first farm. Uh, I'm making 
making them into small floating circles and I wanted to make one circle for every crop, but this was taking up so much time and I still had to build my house. So I had to cut out a lot of the ideas and settle on two circles only. One for carrots and wheat and the other for watermelon and pumpkins. I was kind of disappointed because I really wanted to make this cool alien looking circle farm structure, but in the end, you know, the, this doesn't look too bad. You know, it fits the theme and works perfectly. Now all that's left is the house. But first I had to go do my morning routine of chucking eggs at the chickens and reminding them that penguins are better. After that, I tore down the old fence wall and then expanded it and pushed the wall back. Now I have a good amount of room to build this mansion, which is definitely needed and not a waste. Uh, I, I spent the remaining time of today preparing the items for the house. Now for the building. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what I want or how I want it to look. I just randomly placed some corner block markers to see what cool plan I could come up with. I didn't want a traditional shape and then used the same color palette and pattern design as the other builds in here. After that, I made all walls out of glass. Uh, I wanted to see the land around me, you know, uh, keep my eyes on animals and hunters. Plus, I like the idea of this place being completely open. After that, I made a small staircase to the second floor and wanted it to not cover the entire first floor. I don't know really, it just looks better like this to me. But then I tore down some of the walls on the second floor to extend it, so it hangs over nothing and doesn't follow the first floor entirely. It adds depth and makes it look fancier. Same with the roof, uh, I just put slabs over the open area so the roof has a nice curve to it. Then made the entire second floor and the ceiling for it out of glass, so I can see the night sky while sleeping and see everything around me better. Not too bad of a house, I wish I added more depth and maybe some leaves, but you know, it, it's almost day 100 and I can't spend any more time on this bad boy. And might I just say, this base is looking really beautiful. I'm really happy and proud of how it turned out. Love the look of the place and the vibe, but I, I now have to move everything inside. And you're probably wondering, Skies, it's day 98, why are you building all of this nice, gorgeous, beautiful buildings? Well, it's for the other scientists that come here. You know, uh, when I arrived, there was absolutely nothing. The others can't survive as well as me, so I feel like I had to build this place to help them out. But I'll leave the organizing and furnishing to them. Now, like every healthy person, I woke up today. I got the soul visage and all of my mask. I was going to create an army. I wanted to see what these could do. Uh, I didn't want to use my bow. I wanted a fun fight. So I headed over to the second sun god village and got prepared. I summoned every single mask that I could, and I reached the limit and then went to war. I figured the spearmen that I summoned would have helped me, you know, maybe they would have fought the sun god spearmen? Well, uh, uh, no, n no, uh, of course not. They turned on me. I summoned more enemies for me to fight, and they were vicious. I couldn't get away from them. You know, I, I was dying. I, I couldn't kill them at all. So I ran and lost them in a cave. I had two more on me and I needed to heal. I used the water bucket strategy again and healed up a tiny amount. I was chasing the last one when a hunter came in and the spearman took the bullet for me, maybe. Literally every bad thing that can happen right now is happening. You know, uh, everything wants me dead. Like this cave. So I'm not going to play fair anymore. I dug under one of the huts. I placed water to keep the spearman back and then used my Barrett 50 cowl to take down the second sun god. So uh, here's some advice. Don't ever summon spearmen. Uh, they won't help you. And I returned home to prepare for the final fight, which I completely planned on cheesing. I don't have time to waste on the sun gods anymore. I have to get in, say hi, and get out. So I ran to the camp. I placed down my water bucket of anti-sun god material and got to sniping. I said hi to the sun god with ease and then made the quick journey to his throne to retrieve his mask. I know Halsey will want all three of these. And I know, I know, like that, that was a cheap ending fight, but I came here being told to observe and handle one sun god, not three. I did way more than the job said and I still delivered and got Halsey more mask and info than she would expect. Anyways, uh, once I got back to the base, I took all the important items that I wanted to take and all of the masks that I could carry. After that, I quickly went to the river and headed to the beach. I need to make it there before the sun sets so I can catch the boat out of here. And there we have it. I survived 100 days in Africa. I hope you all enjoy the movie and uh, what would you like to see me survive next? And if I find a way to get it when I do it, I can live it. How much I love you, or I hate how you just put me in my feelings. I just wish you understood the gravity, but you got no sense.